investors, last week we recapped the first quarter of 2024 returns. The S&P 500's best first quarter performance since 2019. First quarter returns placed it in the top 10 over the last 54 years and in the top 15 since World War II. Investors, this is how stocks behave during a soft landing, as we first discussed back last October. We covered what the remainder of 2024 and the first quarter of 2025 might look like for stock markets under a continued soft landing like 1995. We called this scenario one for the following year. This is the Goldilocks run continuing. This is a run of two to 3% real growth and two to 3% inflation outcome. Not too hot, not too cold. Recall in 1995, Alan Greenspan, after much anticipation and waiting, hinted at interest rate cuts in June, but then only cut rates one time in July during the year, and the stock markets were steady, eddy, up until they finally retested the upward sloping 50-day moving average in October. Then they resumed their March higher throughout the end of 1995 and the first half of 1996. Investors, the second scenario I must present is quite the opposite outlook of the Goldilocks. This is a bearish hard landing outcome of the Federal Reserve holding interest rates too high for too long and causing a recession out nine to 12 months from now. This is the hard landing scenario the stock markets and the economy experience post the dot-com run in the first quarter of 2000. Investors, having lived through and managed money during that time period, I cannot deny the similarities of many things going on in both our economy and the stock markets now and then. Back then, I recall, and the data shows that the U.S. consumer was very strong into Christmas 1999 and January 2000. But then, someone turned out the lights in many areas of consumer spending in February of 2000 and the rest of the year. And most of retailing and consumer stocks were horrible stocks to own. Home building stocks were one of the few groups that held in there. But most stocks like Nike and even McDonald's fell out of bed in the first half of 2000. We've seen very similar patterns this year, year to date. Back then, energy stocks, along with semiconductor stocks and dot-com infrastructure build-out plays such as Cisco and Cascade, were huge market winners in the first quarter of 2000. We've seen almost identical leadership so far this year, with those previous cycle winners replaced by Supermicro and a few others. In the semi-space, everyone recalls the parabolic run of Qualcomm in the first quarter of 2000 on early build-out of wireless internet and the smartphone. This year's big winner in the semi-space is NVIDIA, which was also a huge stock back then. I've been posting the overlay of semiconductor space for well over a year bullishly in late third quarter of 2023, while many others were talking crashes or bubbles. Clearly, those calls were not just early, but wrong at that point in time. Investors, unfortunately, the dot-com cycle bubble did come to an end in 2000 during the excess speculation in tech stocks and massive overvaluation in many of the market leaders. In fact, I can tell you exactly where I was standing the day tech stocks peaked in March of 2000. See, back then, the Fed was very aware of speculative juices flowing in the markets and wanted to cool the markets in 2000, even though it was an election year. The economy and the stock markets peaked in the late first quarter of 2000, and they did a lot of chopping around until mid-third quarter, late summer, when the economy succumbed to tighter financial conditions and double and triple ordering and tech spending was front and center and the markets entered its normally weak pre-election time period. Take a look at the daily chart of the S&P 500 in 2000 and into the second quarter of 2001. The dot-com bubble was popping. This was pre-Bush-Gore presidential election controversy both then and after. Now, take a look at the weekly chart for the S&P 500 during the same time period. Investors, that's what a bear market top looks like most often. It usually doesn't happen in one month like the COVID crash. It usually is a series of lower highs and lower lows cascading down over nine to 12 months. After the peak mid-March 2000 at 1553 cash S&P 500, its first low was in March of 2001, almost exactly a year later at around 1,081, which is exactly what I tell investors to expect during a recession. What's that? Minus 30%. Suppose you were lucky enough to sell the exact high and unlucky enough to sell the short-term low, that was minus 30%, almost to the first decimal. Yes, that's a very normal recession. Not a great financial crisis recession, 
for a Great Depression recession and not even close to a bubble collapse recession. So investors, scenario two, hard landing, normal recession repeat. What's the S&P 500 target on the downside given where we sit? Well, minus 30% from here would be around 45 VIX, triangulating to 3650 to 3700. Investors, this would be a bear market beginning in the second half of 2024 outcome. This is the economic hard landing scenario for the rest of 2024. This is higher volatility, sell the rips. It's a secular bear market market. This is the real growth rate slowdown we're seeing behind the scenes in the real time data, which morphs into more than a slowdown in the second half of 2024, just like it did in the second half of 2000 post dot com build out. While this is not our expected outcome, this outcome would be very rare for the fourth year of a presidential cycle as politicians are busy trying to win votes in the election by keeping the economy chugging along. It did happen in 2000 and 2008 as well. This low index level volatility regime we are now in most likely won't last another one or two years straight given the current weaker consumer spending in the US economy and foreign geopolitical turbulence. However, there are current few signs of an impending top and it appears the Federal Reserve may be watching real-time data, not just horribly inaccurate government data releases. Those are our thoughts on a pessimistic scenario for the rest of 2024 and early 2025. Next week, I'll give you a bit of the same rundown on scenario three, presenting what a muddling by scenario might look like. Right now, our team doesn't see the leading signs of a future recession this year, but we can say we will have one once again, probably during this decade, and a recession in the stock markets is a minimum of minus 30% down. Right now, that would equate to around 3650 to 3700 on the S&P 500. Back where we were in October of 2022, when we did experience an earnings recession in the market. For investors or retirees uncomfortable with a wider range of possible equity outcomes, the Oak Harvest team does have a new equity strategy that retains the ability to go long stocks, short stocks, as well as buy partial hedges that act as shock absorbers or a little bit of insurance of a stock portfolio. If you're interested in this strategy, information on this can be found on our oakharvestfunds.com website. From the whole team here, from myself, from James, from Charles, from Joy and Jessica, have a great weekend.